for your invitation Champagne. to experience the clink, the chaos, and all of the empowerment secret you desire. Champagne gang, fierce fam, confidants. <laughs> Welcome to the Reactorium. So by now, we have all heard of what happened to this beautiful black woman on the screen. Unless, like Donald Trump, you've been living under a rock at the bottom of the ocean. Mariana Trench. Her name, Sonia Massey. A woman who called the police for help and the help that was provided to her was three shots. One of which was a bullet to the head. All after pleading, please don't hurt me. All after saying, I love you. And we all wonder how. How can someone who tells someone I love you be met with a bullet? Because in order to recognize pure evil, you have to first see pure love. In order to understand darkness, you have to have first been in the light. And a lot of people are going about their days not understanding that we are truly in spiritual warfare. And just because you can't see it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. You don't have to believe in demons for them to believe in you. You don't have to believe in evil for evil to seek you out. The greatest trick of the enemy is to convince the world that he doesn't exist. And then you see stuff like this. There's a scripture in the Bible that says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Spiritual wickedness. Hmm. What you have to understand about this scripture is that we are spiritual beings wrapped in flesh and blood. What controls your spirit is the true question. Spiritual wickedness in high places means people in authority with powers. The power to choose whether you live or die. Nah, I need y'all to really listen up because there's a war going on. But this war isn't fought on the ground with guns and fists. This war is fought internally with the spirit, by the spirit, in the spirit. This war is a battle between good and evil, God and Satan over God's children. See, this video isn't going to be for everybody because everybody doesn't have the sight like Sonia Massey did. And we're going to get into her video, but I need you to understand that you need to start developing spiritual discernment and start paying attention to what is going on around you and within you. Open your spiritual eyes so you can see the intent of those around you. There was a show that I used to watch and it was one of my favorites. It was named Criminal Intent. One of my favorite Law and Order. So I looked up what Criminal Intent means. And in a nutshell, in order for a person to be charged and convicted of a crime, you have to assess two things. One is the act itself and two, the intent behind the act. That intent is what creates the specific charges that you will face. So if someone breaks into my house and I shoot them and they die, unaliving is for all intents and purposes criminal, right? But the intent behind the unaliving was me protecting myself from harm. So my intent to the criminal act was self-defense. Therefore, I wouldn't be charged because I didn't intentionally set out to unalive someone. Their actions provoked my response and I acted. They cannot convict you without first knowing the intent or the motive behind why you did what you did. Without the why, they can charge you based on what they feel the why is, which is why prosecuting attorneys at trial lay out what they feel happened. Because a why has to be established whether you give them one or not. But when the intent itself is criminal, 
that's when you start seeing charges that reflect the intent of the individual who committed the crime. I've said it before and I will shout it from the rooftops. Power corrupts. Absolute power absolutely corrupts. What do you think happens when you place power into the hands of the already corrupt? You get an absolute disaster waiting to happen. You get an action that is criminal with an intent that's even more criminal, just like this. So we're gonna go through this video and a bunch of other videos. I'm trying to stay calm because there are some things that I need to show you guys. And in order to show this to you, I gotta stay calm and not let the rage on the inside of me start building up because there are some things that I'm gonna tell you that are going to help you protect yourself. And I want you to drop in the comments and we're gonna have a conversation about it. Even though my videos are pre-recorded, when these are premiered, I am always in the comments either under Champagne Secrets or my murder mystery channel, Inky Noir Champagne Mysteries. And P.S. If you notice that your comments are being removed, please let me know because people have been having issues in my premieres with their comments being removed or deleted or not being able to post a comment and they haven't said anything that violates YouTube policy. This is somehow a YouTube thing. I had a video that processed but wouldn't premiere the other day about Trump and in the middle of the premiere it was just buffering and buffering but wouldn't show anything. So I had to delete it and re-upload it. So if this is happening to you I sincerely apologize and just know it's not me. But let's get into this. So now this first video I'm going to show you is kind of a prequel to the video when they actually walk up to her door. And this is when the officer is looking around for the intruder and he happens to see the car in the driveway. So press pause. Can somebody tell me why the name of this officer isn't being released? Why this officer isn't speaking up? This situation brings out so many doggone questions. Remember when I said silence is consent? If you don't stay silent about it, bruh, well, then you leave the power of determining your intent in the hands of the public. Check this out. There is a video that has the vehicle that they were asking Sonia Macy about, and it has broken windows. I have not seen this or two windows are here. Pay attention. That's like as you do. The windows are now I need y'all to pay close attention to the way this car looks. Pay attention to it because this is going to be very important in just a second when he asked her about the car in a few minutes. Pay close attention to the damage done to this car as we get into the communication that Sonia had with these officers at the door. You don't try and call her 17 back here and let her know we're out front. Mess that up, 
You didn't see anybody out walking that way, did you? No, not when I came in. I didn't see anybody that way. I hear her phone ringing and she's refusing to come to the door, so we're about to go to me. Press pause. See, right here you see the difference between the two officers that showed up at her door. As a responding officer to a home where there was a threat, the first thing that you say is, she's dead in there? Even if he said, is she dead in there? Why would that be your first thought? And if that was your first thought, wouldn't you think that he would be radioing for help because of concern instead of just sat standing outside? The officer who was with him said, let's hope not. Does anyone see a problem with this? That the person who ended up being unalived by this officer, the first thing that comes out of his mouth at her door is she's dead in there. And you wonder why people think this was a plot against her from the beginning. Is this a ring doorbell? Yeah, it doesn't work though. Sheriff's office! Two houses down. Oh no, it's right here. Inside, just told us to hold on. You coming to the door or not? All right, hurry up. Do you all hear the callousness and disregard for her in his voice? Hurry up. What if the intruder was in the house with her? You're responding to a call that this woman was in potential danger, and you show up to her house with this callous attitude. Are you coming or not? What? At that point, I wouldn't have come to the door. I wouldn't have come to the door because this response has already let me know that you're on one, that you have ulterior motives, that you didn't show up for my safety or my regard. You sound like you have an attitude just being there. When you go to a restaurant that provides you poor service, you don't get mad at the server with the bad attitude. You get mad at the individual who hired the server and put them in place with the bad attitude. Someone gave him a job knowing full well what his attitude was. You can't convince me otherwise. Whether they had all of the notes or not, character speaks louder than words. And his character in this interaction before she opens the door is screaming loudly. So she's answering the door saying, please God, please God, please God, while she's opening the door. Then she looks at this officer, jackass, asshole, oh, Jesus Christ. and she says, please don't hurt me. If I was her family, I would be looking into any interaction this woman has had with this man or his family. Any and all interaction that she has had with them. Because no one opens the door and says, please don't hurt me, unless this is someone that you're familiar with. In some way, shape, form, or fashion. Unless somehow you know this individual is there to do you harm. My opinion is, she knows him. Somehow, there is a history here that she would open the door and beg him, them, not to hurt her. But she's looking at him 
the whole time. People are saying she's behaving erratically. No, she's behaving scared. She's behaving like she's terrified that she is going to be hurt by this officer. It has to be absolutely terrifying to know that the individual who was sent to protect and serve you could potentially be the individual that's going to take your life. And she was terrified of that very fact, which is why she answered the door the way she did. Because she knew this man was there to cause her harm and no good. He was never on scene to help her. So what'd you hear? Um, somebody outside my house, y'all. Uh -huh. Is this your car over here? Is this your car over here? Uh -uh. Oh. So that's not your black car in the driveway? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, we checked your yard. We walked around the whole block. We didn't see anybody. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we don't. We checked the whole area. There's nobody out walking God. around. I know, y'all. Please, God. Please, God. I'm trying to get help, y'all. But. What do you need help with? Nothing. I just. Please, God. Please, God. Please. I don't know what to do. Do with what? Huh? What do you need help with? Nothing. I just wanted to see if I could help me. What do you want help with? Huh? What do you want help with? Uh, I heard somebody outside. Yeah, we checked your house. We checked your backyard. I walked all the way through all these backyards. We checked your front yard. We didn't see nobody. So so. Nobody's out here. Press pause. So there are a few things here that I need you to pay attention to that shows intent. Remember the title of this video is criminal intent, right? So now she's still begging. Please don't hurt me. Please God, please God, please God, please God, please God. That's not erratic behavior. Again, that is fear. How is it that you have help in front of you and you're still trying to call for help because you know the help that is standing in front of you is a problem. That's number one. Number two, you remember when I told y'all to keep in mind the way that vehicle looked on the side of the house? If you are an officer and you are checking into a disturbance at someone's house and you walk on the side of the house and you see a vehicle with the windows busted in and bashed in, wouldn't you think the first thing you would do is radio that in? Try to find information on the car? Especially when he asked her if it was her car and she said no. Now she could have just been saying that out of fear because she wanted them or him to leave her house. But wouldn't you think immediately the attention would turn to where this car came from and why it was there and why it's damaged? Scratches and scrapes and dents. Wouldn't you think there would be a report or a call in to see if it was in an accident or if there was anything on file to justify why it looked the way it did considering she said it wasn't hers? Because remember the complaint that she called in was on the outside of her house. Could it have been someone damaging this car? But yet and still the officer is not concerned about it. He said he walked around and he didn't see anything. He didn't see anybody. But you saw a damaged car. Which would corroborate that something happened on the outside of her house. Why is your attention on her instead of the car? Which could have been the source of the sound that she heard. Intent. I need y'all to remember that. Because his intent was criminal from the beginning. Nope, nope. No. Check the whole area. Okay. It'll take you so long to answer the door. Oh, I was trying to put on some clothes, sir. I'm sorry. I was trying to get I got gotcha. you. All right. Is there anything else we can do for you? Huh? Is there anything else I can do for you? Again, complete disregard for her. Is there anything else I can do for you? That's the most condescending shit I ever heard. And you're an officer there to protect and serve. How about giving her a police report number? How about a card in case she hear anything else? How about asking her, considering her behavior, asking her to stand with your partner and allowing you to clear her house to make sure the intruder hasn't gotten in and she's safe? How about that? Any of those would have worked. How about checking out the car in the driveway? That would have worked. How about asking her if she felt safe? That would have worked. But instead, she received this callous, condescending damn tone and you wondering why she's behaving fearful of her life? Child. Um, no, sir. Okay. Okay. All right. You doing all right mentally? Yes. Sure? Stuff, right? All right. Okay. I love y'all. Thank y'all. <laughs> all right. That's not your black car, though. That should be. Whose is it? You don't know? Someone just parked it in your driveway? Mm -hmm. They brought it to my driveway. And just left it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's run that. Yeah. Nine, ten, I got a 20 play. Does anyone else live here with you? Uh, 
David Mary four three five five six. You got a name? Take it to me real quick. Catch this. See who we spoke to. Press pause. So I had a question with this right here, right? Because when she said she didn't need anything else, they could have just left and dealt with the issue with the car outside, especially after the report of something going on outside, not inside. But I wanted to know if officers come to your house, even if you call them, do you have to let them in? What is the ruling? And here's what I found. So do you have your pencils ready? So what I found is an officer does not have the right to enter your home without a warrant, right? That we know. But there has been a way around this whole needing a warrant thing that the police have been using in lieu of it. And it's called knock and talk. Yeah. It's where an officer comes to your home and asks if they can talk. Once you step out on the porch or invite them in, anything they see can be used against you. Forgot you left some weed on the table, a little shake. They might also ask if they can look around your place. This usually happens when they don't have an arrest warrant or a search warrant. Generally speaking, they don't have proof to get one, so the knock and talk is a ploy to try to obtain the information through entering your home and searching with your permission. Technically, you do not have to let them in because this is voluntary and it can be tricky. It's tricky because it skates very close to violating your Fourth Amendment right as a citizen to be securing your persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures. So the courts have said knock and talks are okay as long as they're handled properly, but they look at everything, the way the cops approach, how they knock, the time of day, how long they were there, how many officers showed up to make sure it's not intimidating or overstepping. So I went a little bit further and I ran into this website called the Texas Law Hawk and his name is Brian Wilson. Here's what he said. There are five things you need to know when the police come to your house. Now he's going to be referring to Texas, so if the law regarding this is different in your state, drop in the comments and let me know. But here's what he had to say. Number one, stay inside for maximum protection. Think about how you'd feel if someone went through your phone, your glove box, or even your bedroom closet without asking. Feels wrong, right? Well, the US and Texas constitutions agree. They protect your right to privacy in your home against unreasonable searches. This means police need a good reason to search your stuff. If a search is unreasonable, any evidence they find can't be used in court. So what's unreasonable? Well, he says it depends on where the search happens. Your home is where you have the most protection. Courts are super strict when it comes to cops searching your house. If you open the door or step outside, even just a little, you give them more leeway. So then he asked the question, but can't they just bust in? So number two, cops almost always need a warrant. If the police show up at your door without a warrant, they're just like any other person knocking. They need a warrant signed by a judge based on probable cause to legally enter your home. Warrantless searches are usually seen as unreasonable and illegal. So if cops crash your party without one, whatever they find, like drugs or underage drinking, probably won't hold up in court. Do you have to answer the door? No, you don't. But if you decide to talk to them, ask if they have a warrant. If they say yes, ask them to slide it under the door or show you through a window so you can check it out. Number three, no warrant, no entry. You are not obligated to talk to the cops or open the door if they don't have a warrant. 
Courts have ruled that homeowners don't have to interact with the police in this situation. If you open the door, they might see it as an invitation to come in, leading to the potential legal issues about whether you gave consent. So keep the door locked, turn down the music, and wait for them to leave. Four, exigent circumstances, the exception. Cops can only enter your home without a warrant in two situations. If you let them in or if there are exigent circumstances, basically an emergency that doesn't allow time to get a warrant. So Texas courts recognize three main exigencies. One, helping someone in need. Two, preventing the destruction of evidence. Three, protecting themselves from danger. Noise complaints alone do not count as exigent circumstances. If a cop smells marijuana or sees kids drinking, they might try and argue an emergency. But courts have said that the smell of weed alone isn't enough for a warrantless entry. Five, letting cops in equals giving up rights. If you let the police inside, you're waiving a lot of your rights. They can legally search and use anything they find against you. Even if you think you have nothing to hide, it's best not to open the door unless you see a warrant. If the cops do enter without permission, don't resist. Ask for a lawyer immediately and let the lawyer handle it. Now, why is all of this important in regards to Sonia Massey? Number three, because they could have just left when she said she didn't need anything else. Number two, because he kept baiting her in order, in my opinion, to find a way to get into her house. But number one, because I want you guys to understand what your rights are as civilians when you are dealing with the police, especially officers that behave like this one. There was no reason for them to enter that house, none. And now you understand why the other officer began looking into the room, because the minute you let them in, anything they find can be used against you, anything. Why do you think he asked her how was she mentally? In my opinion, I feel like he felt she was on something and he wanted to find a way in the house to see if he could confirm it. This is why you need to know your rights. The Bible says with all of your getting, get understanding. Because we're living in a day and age where we're all going to have to deal with the police at one point or another, you better start learning your rights so that you know not only what you have the right to do, but so that you also know what they don't have the right to do. I know the guard here. Hello? Hello? Yeah, I need, um, I got the sheriff's department here, but I was calling for help from y'all. Are you there with the They're here in my house right now. Okay, hold on, you go need to talk to them. No, hold on, wait a second, wait a second, sir. You can hang up, Carlos, you're there with the deputy, correct? No, hold on, okay? You can hang up. Hold on for what? Just one second, okay? Now we're pausing right here so that you can actually hear the call from the other side. Check this out. Hi, is it Sonia? Yeah, I need, um, I got the sheriff's department here, but I was calling for help from y'all. Okay. Are you there with the, sh the, the deputies right now? They're here in my house right now. Okay, I'm going to let you go so you can talk to them. No, hold on. Wait a second. Wait a second, sir. Okay. Wait a second for what? You're there with the deputies, correct? No, hold on, okay? Hold on for what? I just one second, okay? So this dispatcher should be terminated as well. And let me tell you why. Because the minute she said, I have the deputies here, but I'm seeking help from you, should have let them know that something was wrong. But instead, again, she was met with callousness. She was met with insincerity. She was met with a condescending tone and blatant disregard for the concern that was in her voice. And you could hear the officer tell the dispatcher to hang up. Criminal intent. You're a dispatcher. You're on the phone. I have two officers in front of me. I'm telling you, I need your help. You're asking me 
for what? Instead of saying, let me dispatch some more officers out to you to figure out what's going on. Because if the dispatcher had any regard for the concern of the individuals that call in, he should have immediately picked up on the fact that this woman was in distress and the distress could have potentially been from these two officers. Now hold on because there's another call that I want to play for you. Following newly released recordings in the deadly police shooting of Sonia Massey. She's the Illinois woman killed by a sheriff's deputy earlier this month after calling for help about a possible prowler at her home. The recordings obtained by CBS News include a 911 call from Massey's mother pleading for non-combative officers to be sent to her daughter's home. CBS's Charlie DeMar now with the disturbing new developments. We do want to warn you, the video report is disturbing. I heard somebody outside. 911 calls and dispatch audio are giving the fullest look yet at what happened to Sonia Massey on July 5th and 6th. Records appear to show she was experiencing a prolonged mental health episode. Her mother, Donna, called for help. The mental people tell me to call 911. That was at 9.09 a.m., 16 hours before she was shot. Please don't send no combative policemen that are prejudiced, please. They're scary. I'm scared of the police. Sometimes they make the serious they worse. So her mother specifically asked for non-combative police because sometimes they make the matters worse. I want to know how did he get the call. I want to know did he hear it come over the radio and he decided to take it or was he specifically dispatched to this location for her. I also want to know how long it took between the time the dispatch was made and the time he arrived. Those are two important questions with this situation, especially if your inner conspiracy is kicking up like mine is and you feel like somehow he was waiting for a moment to do exactly what he did. If I was her family, that's what I would be petitioning for. I want to know how he got the call and how long it took him to get there. As a matter of fact, I want to see the full body cam footage from the moment they pulled up to the moment they left. Because we clearly know he didn't turn on his body cam. Why? Why do you think an officer that is responding to a home with a potential issue and threat wouldn't immediately turn on his body cam footage to make sure he's protected in the case of a situation? Why? Criminal intent. What's up? Um, I got some paperwork. Can you grab that Bible, please? Yeah. Hey, I just need your name so we can get out of here. Has there, was there any damage previous to your car? Uh, previous, yeah. Okay, what was the damage? A dent, I believe. What, what about windows? Oh, that, it was something that happened earlier. Okay, perfect. Uh, what is your last name? Uh, Should not think about your last name. Okay. You're not in trouble, I just need to Massey. attach. Huh? Massey. What happened? Yeah. You have an ID that made things so much easier. I, I just need to get, just a driver's license will do, and I'll get out of your hair. I want to show y'all my paperwork. So I need y'all to pay attention. Number one, she asked for her Bible. <laughs> Why do you think she asked for her Bible? Because she understood that she wasn't wrestling against flesh and blood, but against principalities. She wanted her Bible for protection. But even more than that, he asked her for her last name. She hesitated at first. He told her she wasn't in trouble. She gave him her last name. Then he proceeds to say, can I see your ID? It would make it a lot easier. But he takes his pad and puts it in his shirt. If you're trying to identify her for your report, why are you putting your pad away? Wouldn't you keep the pad out because you need it to write her information down once she produces her ID? And look at the look that she's giving him. She knows this man is on one. She can feel this is about to go all bad. This is why y'all need to develop something called spiritual discernment. That little spidey sense that goes off to let you know that something is wrong or about to be wrong. I will what? get your paperwork. What paperwork? Okay. I got some paperwork. Well, just get your ID. Well, let's get your ID session. first and then... One task at a time here. Okay. Let me here, go. grab your ID for me. Uh-huh. Okay. Your ID. One task at a time. So let's do an ID and then you can dig around for your uh, paperwork. I don't know where my ID is. You, you have... in that stack right there maybe? One second. Check on her. Okay. Sure. I need this. No, we don't need a fire while we're here. Right. Okay. Let me see. Hey. Okay. <laughs> what are you doing? Huh? What are you doing? Uh, away no, from your hot steaming water. Away from the hot steaming water? Yeah. Oh, I was refusing to let a name of Jesus. 
So, there's been a lot of talk as to what she meant when she made this statement, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Some have stated that she was just joking, but the fact of the matter is, she wasn't. When the officer stepped back and she asked, why are you stepping back? And he stated, away from your hot steaming water. She said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. What she was saying is, I'm expressing extreme disapproval to what you are saying and I reject it and denounce it. Yeah. To rebuke means to express strong disapproval of someone's choices or behavior. It's a tool of spiritual warfare when dealing with the enemy. So what she was saying was I reject the statement that you just made and the thought of moving away from the hot water as if I am a danger to you and would do anything to harm you. That statement is demonic and I reject it. And understanding that she within herself had no authority to do such, she used the name of Jesus, which triggered this hellhound and he immediately became enraged, angered beyond comprehension. You do realize the Bible says demons tremble at the name of Jesus, right? You ever see the movie, The Exorcist? You ever see how sometimes it takes multiple priests to perform an exorcism? If you were in a Pentecostal church, you ever notice how when they tarry with some people, it takes a very long time. They just, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Because some demons are stronger than others. The Bible even says these kind come out but by fasting and prayer. That's why he went from okay to completely enraged because the demon on the inside of him couldn't tolerate the name of Jesus. She was using the weapons of her warfare against an enemy she knew she was powerless to defeat on her own. So did y'all hear what I just heard? Because originally they led us to believe that the only person that was telling her to drop the pot was the officer that shot her. But the other officer also told her to drop the pot when she was kneeled down. Here, let me play it for you again. Listen close. You better fucking not. I swear to God, I'll fucking shoot you right in your fucking face. Okay, I'm sorry. Drop the fucking pot. Drop the fucking pot. Drop the fucking pot. Fuck you. You better fucking not. I swear to God, I'll fucking shoot you right in your fucking face. Okay, I'm sorry. Drop the fucking pot. Drop the fucking drop. So after the partner tells her to drop the effing pot, he echoes drop the effing pot and then proceeds to pull out his gun. So this is two weapons of destruction pointed at one woman with a pot. I need you to let that sink in because she was armed with nothing but a pot with water. And even if she would have thrown the pot, it wouldn't have went that far. And majority of the water would have been on her or near her. So there was no excuse for this at all. None. Bring him us now. We got a headshot wounded the female. Headshot wounded the female. 1078. So that sound you hear Fuck. sounds like water running in the sink. I was on. I was on. I'm gonna go get my kit. Now if you headshot, you're actually done. You can go get it, but that's a headshot. <clears throat> fuck. God damn it. God fuck. Dude, I'm not taking fucking blowing water in the fucking head. And look, it fucking came right to our feet too. God damn it. God damn it. You good? I'm good. You good? Yeah, I'm good. Oh, she got let her fucking just. God. Is that what you do, man? Fuck! Here's how you know she was still alive because he tells his partner, let her just. There's nothing we could do. She was not gone when she received this sh shot. He told his partner, just let her die. An officer meant to protect and serve said, let her die. You good? All right. Fuck. Well, I mean, you know, what else do we do? 
I'm not taking hot boiling water to fucking face and it already reached us. So now we're gonna take a look at this from another angle so that we can see what happened from the other body cam. You, you, you better fucking not. That's where I got I'll fucking shoot you right in your fucking face. Now here's what I want you to see. When he initially tells her to drop the pot, the pot is in her hands. She has on her oven mitts, she's holding the pot, which she just got off the stove or filled up with water either way. When he repeats again, drop the pot, her hands go in the air with the oven mitts. The pot is still on the counter. When she kneels, the pot is still on the counter. So she is not a threat. Now I'm gonna stop the video right here because this has everyone in an uproar whether or not she threw the pot. Let me tell y'all something. I wouldn't give a damn if she threw it, launched it, tossed it, or damn flipped it. The fact of the matter is she had two officers approaching her like she was a threat when she clearly didn't pose one to them. This officer escalated this situation, and if this video is not altered, in my opinion, she grabbed something to defend herself, and what was close to her was the pot. What do you do when the threat against you is a person in authority? They're intruders. They shouldn't have been in our house, and they shouldn't have been there that long. They could have grabbed their tasers, but they didn't. They grabbed their guns. They could have de-escalated the situation, as they're allegedly trained to do, but they didn't. They grabbed their guns. So what do you do when you have to protect yourself against the protection? Because he's an officer, so I don't have a right to defend my life? To protect myself against unjustified harm? And here's where I fought the other officer at. Because you didn't say anything. You didn't stop him. Because it's going to take the police to stop the police. You knew how he was handling this situation was wrong. You just didn't think he would take it this far. Uh-huh. At what point are the police going to step in and stop the police when they are the aggressors? I mean, if we're going to talk about it, let's talk. Scoot up. At what point do the police take that same firearm and aim it at the individual who is to protect and serve and tell them not today? Not on my watch. At what point? Point, because in doing nothing, you make yourself look as guilty as the person who pulled the trigger. At what point does a life matter more than the brotherhood? You took an oath to protect and serve. That oath didn't just mean against assailants. It also meant against those in uniform who go against that oath. It's going to take the police to stop the police. I applaud her for being courageous enough to try to defend herself even when it meant it could cost her her life. Because if you don't stand up for you, then who will? Who? And you wonder why people are screaming for police reform. Do the police do random psyche vow? If they don't, they should. You have to do random drug testing on your job, don't you? So if they don't, why don't they? From an outside source like FBI profilers, no one should have to question their safety because Pinhead's hellhounds climbed out of one of his boxes and showed up at your door with a badge and a gun. Spiritual wickedness in high places. No one. And this is who Trump wants to give immunity to. And why hasn't this other officer spoken up? You would think you would want to clear yourself of all of this and tell your side of the story. Tell what happened leading up to showing up at that house. Say something, but your silence is kind of saying everything. And what are you gonna do when people get tired and everyone starts defending themselves? Then what? This isn't to say all officers are the problem, but if you're a good cop and you don't do anything to stop the bad ones, you're a part of the problem. Drop the fucking pot! 19 shots fired! Shots fired! Shots fired! Drop the fucking pot! Drop the fucking pot! Drop the fucking pot! Bring emails now, we got a headshot wound to the female. Headshot wound to the female, 1078. Fuck. I was on, I was on. I'm gonna go get my kit. No, get a headshot, dude, she, she's done. You can go get it, but that's a headshot. <clears throat> God damn it. God, fuck. Dude, I'm not taking fucking boiling water to the fucking head. And look, it fucking came right to our feet, too. God damn it. God damn it. You good? I'm good. You good? Yeah, I'm good. 
Holster we'll down. Let her fucking just. God. There's nothing we can do, man. Fuck. You good? All right. Fuck. Well, I mean, you know, what else do we do? I'm not taking hot boiling water to the fucking face, and it already reached us. <clears throat> They got a 52 in route? Yeah, 1078. 318, she's still breathing, but she's losing a lot of blood from the head. <clears throat> I'll go get my med kit, I mean. Go, go get, yeah. get your I mean, there's not much we can do. Do we got any call history with her being 1096? Let me explain why. Negative. She's in the kitchen. Just, just, Sergeant, who, uh, no. Let's just chill out out here. Just Sarge right now. Are you guys secure? Yeah, we're secure. No, it's just her in the house. She's 1096. So, is there anything you think we can do for her? No. Alright, I'm not even going to waste my med stuff then. You want to run down real quick? Nope, not yet. Alright. All right. House is clear. She was the only one. Where's she going? No, she had a boiling water and came at me with boiling water. You shot her? Yeah. She said she was gonna rebuke me in the name of Jesus and came out with boiling water. That's what all this is. I was standing right here. All right. And that's where he's landed. <clears throat> okay, what do you all need for a moment? Just nothing right now. Just hang out out there for me. Thank yeah. you. <clears throat> I need to uh, find some sort of around the house if you guys can. But other than that, that's not good. Any idea, suspect? Me. <laughs> Oh, uh, I didn't yeah. know what happened. <clears throat> yeah, I'm good. This fucking bitch is crazy. <clears throat> uh, he's got tape. I, I think I got a roll. I got some coming up. Get some up. You got enough, if not, I gotta roll. We're running across loose the front here. Where do you want it? I just around the house. You guys can go inside. Okay. Red water. That's good. Yeah. 
Alright, we're just cut to the garbage cans. Yep. Yeah. Where's he at? Inside with me. <laughs> He's good. Yeah. <clears throat> That's my fault, man. I didn't know. I didn't know it was. No, a dude, it was good. I, it fucking happened so goddamn quick that we didn't have time to fucking call shit out that it was me and. Yeah, that's all we were trying to figure out. Make sure we need to look for No, nah, we're good. I think that she set it up on purpose. So, this is what it is. He said, don't go in. Yeah, I have fucking choice. Try not to move that bag. We'll take her out on a backboard so we don't have to move that. Yeah, he's good, dude. I made sure he was good. Yeah, he was here for the whole thing. No, 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 no. We barely got missed. Okay. <laughs> hey guys, grab the backboard. I'm going to chill in my car. Huh? I'm going to chill in my car for a minute. Okay. Hey. I got it. Chill my car. Fuck. So he calls her a bitch, calls her a mental patient, that's what 1096 means, and said she set the whole thing up. And these are the individuals that we give a badge and a gun to. Let me tell you how to deal with disrespectful police. So story time. <clears throat> so when my grandson was younger, my daughter had dropped my grandson off to his father in order to watch him when she went to work. So when my daughter comes back to the house after getting off work and she walks in the house, I notice she walked in without my grandson. All of a sudden, my spidey senses go off. Discernment. I knew something was wrong. I could tell by her face. Now mind you, my grandson was still in a car seat at this time, so he was pretty young, wasn't even one yet. So I asked her where was my grandson at, and her response to me was, he wouldn't give him back to me. Press pause, baby, who is he? And what do you mean he wouldn't give you your son? Put your shoes back on, turn back around. Huh, we finna go back. So we get in the car, head to my grandson's father's house. On the way there, I get on the phone with the police. I let them know what's going on. Let them know I'm headed over to the house. They need to send a police car to meet me there because I will not leave without my grandson. So we get to the house. Police pull up, I think, at the same time. And my grandson's other grandmother is yelling and screaming out the window. Just, bitch this and I'll beat your ass this and that. And Mind you, one of the officers had already gone in the house. The other officer was standing by me. So I didn't say anything. I just looked over at the officer and I said to him, so you're not gonna do anything about this? Aren't threats punishable by law? The officer didn't look in my direction, nor did he say anything. Now mind you, this officer was black. The other officer was Hispanic. So I continued to stay there. She's still threatening, telling me what she gonna do. And I looked at her and I told her, all I want you to do is come out the house because when you come out the house, I'ma beat your mother freaking ass. You done threatened me on social media. You threatened me on the phone. You threatened me by text. I don't do well to threats after 9-11. I take threats seriously. So now I'm here. All you gotta do is come out the house. The officer looked at me and said, ma'am, I said, sir, don't you mad me because you let her hurl threats out that window for the last five minutes and you ain't said shit. Don't say nothing to me now. By this time, I'm probably tiptoeing to the gates of hell because see, seed of my seed, flesh of my flesh is in the house and I already told you I'm not leaving without him. So the Hispanic officer comes outside and he has the nastiest attitude. When I say nastiest attitude, pointing in my face, getting loud, talking about you better calm down, sir. What you don't understand is I will not leave without my grandson. 
I will turn this entire block upside down over my grandchild. So he threatened to arrest me. So I looked at him and told him, oh, you think you're dealing with one of them who don't know her right. I need you to stand right there. Don't move. I grabbed my phone. I dialed 911. When the dispatcher got on the line, I let him know who I was and the fact that I had just placed a call about my grandson. And I let him know, I have two officers over here that you sent who clearly don't know how to do their job. And what I'm letting you know is the same thing that I let him know, which is that I'm not leaving here without my grandson. So what I need you to do is send me another squad car. I said, as a matter of fact, don't send another squad car. Send me the sergeant. Please get the sergeant out here. Because if you don't, it's going to be a problem over my grandbaby. The dispatcher said, ma'am, ma'am, don't worry about it. We're going to send someone out right away. So the sergeant ends up pulling up. So while I'm talking to the sergeant, now mind you, the other officer has gone back in the house. While I'm talking to the sergeant, he asked me what happened. So I let him know. The other officer comes back out the house. So now his whole demeanor has changed. And he said, well, how am I supposed to know what to do? They're in there saying that the baby is with them more than the baby is with you. I said, okay, I'll tell you what. If you can go in that house and provide me anything in that house for that baby that didn't come out that diaper bag, I will politely walk away. Go in that house and pull me out some clothes for that baby that didn't come out that diaper bag because I got clothes at my house. Pull me out some milk from that house that didn't come out that diaper bag because I got that at my house. If they have this baby more than I do, then you should be able to pull something out the house that belongs to that baby that's not in the diaper bag. And if you can't do that, I will not leave without my grandson. So then he says, well, I'm more inclined to believe you because you're the one acting like you had some sense. At this point, I really wanted to cuss because now you're playing in my face because your sergeant is here. So the sergeant told me, ma'am, just wait here a second. He goes in the house and not five minutes later, he comes out with my grandson. When you are dealing with disrespectful cops, when you are dealing with disrespectful cops who show up to assist you with an attitude, what you do is you get back on the phone and you get a sergeant to the scene. You got to know how to protect yourself. Even if that means you got to start carrying two phones, one to record and one to recall for backup because no one should have to deal with disrespect or being demeaned or being devalued by those who are sent to you to protect you and to serve you. Know your rights. Know what you have the right to do and know what they do and don't have the right to do. That's how you protect yourself. Know how to call for backup because see her mother had already asked for them not to send a certain type of officer to this house and that's exactly what showed up. The sad part is I wish she would have asked the dispatcher on the telephone to send additional officers. I wish she would have told them that she felt uncomfortable with the officers that were there. <sighs> this is sad. This is sick. And this needs to stop because eventually what's going to happen is people are going to start defending themselves and it's going to be a whole lot of good police that end up being hurt because they're with and partners with trash like this. We are going to be doing a follow-up to this video because I have found some things that have come to light like his grandmother and things that I want to kind of look into. So we will be doing a follow-up. Drop in the comments and let me know what you think. Spend some time developing your spiritual awareness so you can feel when something isn't right and when you need to move around pay attention to people's behaviors from the way they look to the way they move to the way they speak you better start paying attention because your life could depend on it drop in the comments and let me know what you think consider joining the fizz fam in the champagne game hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you'll be notified when we jump into whichever sector we jump into for another show consider supporting the channel and always remember if it doesn't cause you to elevate it's causing you to depreciate till we meet again ta-ta